Friday night. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It's another DJ Roundtable show. And as always, always got some great DJs here. We have one DJ off on vacation. Hopefully he's enjoying himself very much. Uh, cruising around the uh, on the ocean on a nice big cruise ship. Uh, we have another DJ who is uh, studying for uh, his school. And another one out there doing a gig. And we wish them all to enjoy themselves, be safe. And as well, we'll see him back here again in the not too distant future. We want to thank you for coming out tonight and watching the show. And all, as always, I want to thank all the new subscribers to the channel on YouTube. And if you're new here on Twitch, make sure you follow the channel. We're here on Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock. I have some great DJs with me from all around the country. I try to get uh, all different voices and as well as having all different types of DJ and DJ companies to get ideas, thoughts, and share stuff with you guys. Speaking of sharing, do me a favor. Make sure you get a hold of another DJ, a friend of yours who also DJs, and maybe one of their friends. Send them a link for the YouTube channel and send them a link for the video on YouTube and have them enjoy and maybe have them come on Tuesday and hang out here with us live on Twitch. If you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to hit that like button. Make sure you hit subscribe and also hit the bell icon so you know when I drop a video or go live and that way we can all chat, have fun, hang out together. Uh, other than that, I appreciate we have a lot of great people. Uh, Jordan Taylor is back again. We liked him so much. We're going to keep him around for a while here. Uh, <laughs> they're an awesome couple. Uh okay. Yeah, I, I wish Tracy was here a lot of times, but unfortunately, she's here in spirit. She's actually off uh, doing um, working at her regular job. She's actually on her computer right now. So, but she is also an integral part of my business. Henceforth, the name TBM. If you guys don't know it, it's Tracy Buddy Mueller. That's what our initials stand for. So she is my boss, but. I guess I'm the mouthpiece, like you could say. I have Mr. Dixon in the great state of Ohio. I have DJ Brantley up north in the land of cheese in Wisconsin. Of course, he's riding the border with Minnesota, eh? And uh, which is kind of like a Canadian South. <laughs> and then I have in the great, beautiful out west California, almost Hollywood or Holly Weird, depending which way you want to look at, is DJ Salsa SoCal's big hit DJ out there who loves stuff and loves equipment, which we were talking about equipment before we came in here. DJ Brantley was sharing some ideas he has for lights and some other stuff. So I'm going to start off with a DJ equipment question for you guys, a gear question. And I'm going to give you a scenario for you guys to walk through because I was watching some gig logs today. And this is a question of subwoofer or no subwoofer and the reason why i say that is because the fact that it's the size of the gig now we're not talking about a huge room i would probably say 20 by 40 20 by 45 foot room 15 foot ceilings so again decent height not not tremendous height not 30 foot ceilings not 25 foot ceilings but like 15 foot ceilings so kind of figure kind of like a bar size room with about a dance floor to hold 14 15 people and you have 50 people max for the event is this something you pull subwoofers out for now my thinking because i use line arrays is no and the reason why is that it could be overkill for that room, overpressurizing, overheating hard. And the video I was watching, again, great DJ, great video. But when he's recording, the bass was so loud, it was drumming out the audio on his phone. So you can kind of imagine how it was there in the room, a small room with you know, subwoofers ringing. Now, for me personally, something like that, I would use my Maui 5s. 8-inch woofer, which is in the bottom, nice little base, tight, and control it from there and make sure it's not over-penetrating and not hitting too hard. So kind of give you that scenario and that thought right there, the question for tonight. To start everything off, would you use a subwoofer? If so, what subwoofer would you use? Or we forgo a subwoofer and just use like a pair of 10s or 12s 
or use a single subwoofer, or do you go two subwoofers? Oh, or do you pull a mat and pull dual 21s in there and blast everyone out? So I'm going to start with DJ Brentley here tonight <laughs> and ask him first, because I know he loves subs. Would you do a gig like that with subs or no subs? I'm using the subs. If I would rather be able to give a warmer, you know, more full sound and not have to push everything then really have to push a pair of 15s or something. And at the prices, you know, some of the couples are paying, and, if you, you know, what they're booking me for part and parcel is what my setup is, you know, sh I'm showing up with. And I'm definitely seeing with the younger couples, at least, they definitely want the whole package. They don't want, I mean, if the line array is like an RCF or something, or the column array, I should say, then yeah, they're okay with it. But a lot of the couples that I've been, you know, I'm talking to, they want the whole package. They want to feel like they're in a club. They want, you know, to have that ravey kind of hop and reception. So, and even the ones that are smaller, you know, groups for me, they definitely all ask for about the same thing. So even if I don't need all that power I'm bringing, I would just rather wash the room cleanly so it feels good too. Okay. So, you know, it, it's it's a hard thing because 50, 60 people, and, and again, this goes back to the question, how many subwoofers would you use? And if so, what size? If I'm bringing them, I'm just going to, you know, with my all white setup, because I've only got the 15s, I'm bringing the 15s. And I definitely prefer using my 18s when it comes to my black setups. So I would definitely bring them. I'm just going to back off of how heavy I'm pushing them. I'm going to use both of them so it's a balance, you know, it looks symmetrical, it looks balanced, you know, to the eye, even though it may not be sound, you know, the integrity of the sound may have some, you know, overlaps and some bounces. I want it to be aesthetically pleasing as well as sound decent. Okay. So we're going to go over to Mr. Dixon, ask Mr. Dixon. Mr. Dixon, you got that gig, like I said before, you know, it's a not real huge room, 50, 60 people there. Dance floor holds about 10, maybe 12 people. Um, you know, standard kind of size room, about the size of a bar. Would you subwoofer or not subwoofer? And if you decide to subwoofer, what subwoofer would you use? Uh, it depends on the um, people there. If it's an older crowd, then I would probably just stay with my line arrays. But if it's a younger crowd, I'll probably bring my subwoofer. And then I have no choice. I only have a 10-inch subwoofer. A EV subwoofer. So, cause, um, because the last gig I did was, um, that was a 60th birthday party. The room was kind of small, but I still bought my subwoofer to give that, that, you know, extra, um, bump to it because, um, they wanted throwback R&B, 90s hip hop. And that's how the music was back then. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of the things that, I've run into it actually people coming complaining about with the RCFs, the J8 saying, can you turn down the bass? And I keep everything at zero right down the middle for my mids. And then dinner, like dinner, I'll knock it down, you know, a little bit for bass, just knock it down. So that way it's not a heavy bass when the volume is a little bit lower, but it's one of the things that again, uh, it's, it is very interesting. Um, Matt, I know what side you're going to go on. <laughs> it's a question is, what would you use for your uh, base cannon? The question is not whether to use subs. The question is what subs to use. Uh, you know me. I have a pair of single 18s. I've got dual 21s, a pair of them. I've got a pair of white dual 18s. And now I have a single dual 18 from RCF. Uh, so it's all about which to use. So um, I factor a few things in. Um, it depends on the size of the room. Uh, it also depends on the package. If it's an all white package, all I do have is the dual 18s in white. So we do have to bring those unless they're doing like one of my different packages where I can put the sub under the table behind me. Then I'll use my dual 18. Uh, otherwise, if it's not an all white setup and it's a smaller room, I usually do. Uh, it, it also depends on the booth. So my thing is that dragon booth that I have, it's made of wood and plexiglass and you can't put a sub behind it because it traps the base. So I have to put one on each side. And in that sense, if it's not a big room, I'm not going to bring out 21s or 18s and I just do two single 18s. So it also depends on what I have to transport with. Uh, my account is currently banned from U-Haul uh, because we 
totaled one of their trailers. Uh, not my fault, but um, didn't have insurance on it, obviously, because who buys the coverage? So, um, yeah, so I'm in the process of going through whatever uh, insurance is, is going through with my insurance and U-Haul, and in the interim, they put a flag on my account. So lately, we've been doing cargo vans um, just through Hertz or Enterprise or I don't know, one of those. Um, so with those, it's a little bit smaller and harder to get a dual 21 in because I also have to push it up a ramp. It's a little bit steeper. So yeah, my car was fine. I guess you got to get so. one with a hydraulic lift next time, you know, that way you can just lift it up in the back, uh, get one of no, those so, nice Zuzus. Yeah. I, and uh, I only, I just got a pair of LD Stinger 15 inch subs, which is one of the few that's a reflex base reflex design cabinet. So it pumps a ton of base out of the 15 because I do have some venues that don't allow subs. And so that is what I use for there uh, because they won't allow column arrays either. Um, they've caught on. So everybody that thinks that they were smart enough to be like, oh, you don't allow subs. Well, this is the speaker I have. They've been banning those too. Uh, we don't do those venues often because, you know, why? But uh, it's, I've got a couple coming up. So, but yeah, you got to have base. And I agree with Brettley. If you can have a, a sub, then you can bring smaller tops. So you save either way. Um, and you can also push it way louder. So I, I don't, I don't like pushing bass through the main speakers. Um, it just, it, they're not, yeah, they're, they can do that, but you don't want to be clipping them all night. So less load on there, the better. Okay. So I'm going to go now. To, what happened? Oh, there she is. I was like, she ran away. <laughs> okay. Oh, so I'm going to ask sure you guys. Okay. <laughs> uh, again, uh, scenario is a smaller room, smaller event. It doesn't matter what the event is. It's, you know, again, 50, 60 people. This dance floor holds like 10, 12 people. Small area, small room. Would you use a subwoofer or not? Yes, always. Subs around out the sound. Um, I would probably bring one. I do have a smaller one. It's a 12. Um Let's just say it's not an EV, um, but then I have the two EVs, but my problem is that uh, they're mono input. So if I run one, I have to run another cable from my mixer and yeah, you know, that kind of stuff. But I would probably bring one at least a, the 12 or probably the 118. Just because even with the like EV 50s, which I don't, I have, uh, I just have the EV, um, 15 P's, um, like the old wooden ones. Mm -hmm. uh, even with those, I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it also depends on what music you play. Like we we do a lot of yeah. EDM, and you can't have EDM without bass. That's just oh, yeah. it also just sounds weird, you know? It's yeah. Just... I, I have, but there's there's tons of guys in my area that just run two tops and you know, do the clients notice? It can. No, but it. I think it just doesn't sound. You don't get that like energy on the dance for you that you do with like a nice full sound with nice. It's true because it, we it have done away. it with the two tops and full range just yeah. for smaller mm -hmm. events. They weren't weddings. They were just little like bar, uh, bar gigs just because of time. And it was just easier to bring them. But it sounds so much better with the sub. Even with the, other the little 12. It yeah. just rounds it out. And I think that that's what I was going at with the EV50s. Like, even though they have subs, I still, like, think a 12 or a 15 kind of rounds those out. The other, the other then thing... Then when you only have one, you got to hide it because mm -hmm. it looks Well, if, you, if you're using a sub yeah. with an Evolve 50, you actually are going to create a comb effect then. Because the, the way a line array works versus... It's, it's with the technology of a line array, how it works with the subwoofer on it. It creates a comb effect. Um, the, the it, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people who do that, and it actually you reduce your baseline then, versus increase your baseline. So if you're going to run a subwoofer, you don't run line arrays. You run regular top two way top, and then run sub. If you run a, a line array, you run, run a line array as it is. You add that subwoofer in there, you actually create a comb effect because the way a line array works. So a line array, it's 120 degree cast. Versus mm -hmm. a 90-degree cast. So it's a different casting way of doing sound. And the, the subwoofer is, is designed differently as well as the DSP built into it. 
as well as a crossover. So it runs totally different. So running a subwoofer with a line array, I see guys do that. And it, they they basically, they're, they're taking actually base away versus adding base. So I would uh, say if, you, if you're going to use a subwoofer, I would definitely say use your two-way cabinets and then, you know, run whatever subwoofer you want. If you don't, want, don't need a subwoofer, you know, yeah. just run your EV, uh, your Evolve 50s or Evolve 30s. You know, I I run my RCFs. I run the J8s. I never added a subwoofer. I actually sold my subwoofer, so I don't have a subwoofer anymore. And I have, I still have in storage, I have JBL PRX uh, six, uh, 615s and two Eon 615s. So I have two way cabins, but I got rid of, I get rid of my subs because I'm like, I'm, I use line arrays and the way they cast and stuff like that. I, the, I don't know if you guys saw or not. I put some pictures up on my personal Facebook page of a room I did. Um, 180 person wedding, good size room. I mean, they hit fine on the dance floor. And that's all I, I care about music, the bass and the dance floor. The back of the room, they could hear what's going on. They could hear vocal. You know, they could hear the talking. But to me, the dance floor is where I want the heat at. I don't want it hitting to the back of the room and knocking grandma's teeth out. <laughs> what do you have? I have uh, J8s. Okay. RCF J8s. I was going to say one more thing about... Oh, I didn't realize I wasn't... No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say one more thing that uh, I use my subwoofer bag as a place to put all the other bags in. So whenever I go to gigs and I don't have either a giant top of a flight case to throw all my crap in or a big subwoofer bag to throw all my crap in. I'm like trying to stack bags and put weights on top of them to get them on a cart and out of there. If I have just a, like whenever I bring my, all my setup and my subwoofer, I have two big cable boxes that are rigid and then all my soft bags just pile into the subwoofer bag, throw that on the cart. I put my one cart load either in a separate room wherever they could store stuff or back in the car and I'm good to go. Um, Cause I've done gigs without subwoofer bags and trying to stuff stuff in a speaker bag is wild. I was watching Aaron, no, Rachel, DJ Rachel's thing today. And I was like, wow, she doesn't have a bag or anything to put all these cases and soft bags in. And I'm just like, she's making 16 trips to a side room. And I'm just like, yeah. So yeah, I, that's I saw, the, I saw get the one she lost power at. Yeah. Yeah, she she is she's been on the show before. She she is really uh, she's really she a fun person. She's really awesome. Way too many notes. I I saw her. I get it being thorough, is great, but that is the most con complex looking thing uh, for notes and scripts, and it would just make me more nervous. Of like, oh my god, I got to memorize the script. Everyone like, does. I just have, everyone does things differently. I know. And some people are very quick, a little easy. They they want a little post it note that says, you know, hey, the the, the, the bride and groom's name is this. The first, you know. Hey. The, the the couple's name is this, you know, whatever they they have basically on a post-it note, you know, they basically have uh, you know, a little piece of paper like this, everything written down on. And then some people have a more elaborate. It's everyone does things differently. And that's the thing is that that's gives you an idea. And also had had me asking, do I not take enough notes? Do I not have enough information? I keep it simple. Just one, you know, one we were page. one page and she has multiple okay. pages. She may ask more questions. I don't I didn't see everything. Didn't read everything, but everyone does everything differently. And I'm not going to fault her for that. The thing is, we all know with weddings, we need to be very, very thorough with a wedding because time management, a lot of questions, a lot of things going on here. So I want to see a show of hands here because uh, Matt kind of brought up an important thing. I know uh, one person does, uh, actually two, uh, including myself. Um, who here has speaker bags and has everything in bags or cases for speakers and subwoofers. Yeah, I know DJ Brentley does. So, and he actually has oh, yeah. two everything needs 100%. a bag. Everything needs a bag or or a case or something. It's and, you got to protect your investment. If you don't, yep. like I've seen so many K12 just dragged, thrown and just so dented. There's a guy here award-winning he calls himself and he's putting up two k-12s that are the most dented ugly things i've ever seen and i'm just like don't people notice that like that's the first thing i notice i know i'm a dj but other people have to see that like a dented speaker is not very professional looking like a big like not one dent one nick okay i get it but this thing is like looks like it was dragged over a charcoal pit and burned <laughs> it looks terrible and that's the thing is that so. you want to protect your investment your investment is money and 
you know, most speakers companies you can order a new grill for. So you have a grill that's damaged. You have a grill that's dented. Most speakers, including line arrays, you can replace that area, that front grill. Um, and you have to look at it. Sometimes you may have to take it to a shop. They'll do it and they'll charge you a fee for it. I much rather do that or replace the grill myself, order it from the manufacturer, replace the grill, then have it look all dented. Things happen. You know, you just brought it in. You got to dent something, ran into it. You know, one of the servers ran into your equipment with a cart when you had it on the floor or whatever. Things happen. But afterwards, fixing it, getting it repaired, getting it replaced, whatever you need to do, you want to be presentable for your gigs. And that's one of the reasons why I ask who here has bags. I think everyone I know, um, I, I also think, I know Tommy has bags and I know uh, Jeff has bags. I'm not sure about Terry. Um, but uh, Tukey Covers, um, which what uh, Brentley uses, they actually make a cover for the J8 uh, for RCF. They have a lot of brands. I actually talked to them. Great company out there in Michigan. And they'll customize anything you need up to a certain size. Yep. So they all will... my facades, like my dragons or the custom ones I have, I just sent them the specs and what I wanted with it. They sent it back. I mean, they're not the cheapest, that's for sure. But I'm definitely willing to spend the money on their quality product, knowing how hard I am my stuff. And that's the thing is that a lot of the uh, bag cover, a lot of the covers, depending on the manufacturer, can be lackluster because I know the JBL covers are not as nice as the RCF covers. And then the Tookie covers are much nicer than the RCF covers. So protect your investment, spend a few dollars, get either the original OEM ones, if you have you know, QSC, EV, whatever it is. If you don't want that, you want premium stuff, go to Tookie. Make sure you sit there and use DJ Brentley's name. Say, hey, I heard DJ Brentley talk about it. He may get a token or two. Who knows? And also, we're still looking for people for DJ Brentley stickers. I'm still want to see that. I've got a reminder going to you now. I forgot to send it out last week. It's sitting up here on my desk. So, no problem. I will have one. <laughs> we'll have it. I will actually put it on here on my arm here for the show so we'll have it on for the show so you'll see it here on the show you'll see his uh his tag when i get it uh but the other thing is that also you again you're investing money speakers are not cheap i don't care if you have uh you know the uh price uh valued speakers from harbinger or you have the top of the line uh one-off meyer sound speakers and anything in between, we all invest money in them, and we know how much they run and how much they cost. My and speakers coming soon for me. They're not. Soon as they're not get, cheap. As soon as I could get eleven thousand dollars, <laughs> then I'm gonna buy them. I want those. The X forties. They're best sounding speaker I've ever heard. Anyway, sorry. Well, again, you're you're running like concert level music there. You're gonna. I'm, I'm waiting for you to open up. You know, do sound for like a big uh, band or something like that. I you know disturbed or. Oh, God smack. Because I don't, I don't, I, I'm not an audio engineer. That's the thing is like, I don't know how to tune a system or do any of like that. I just, I, I cross it over. Like that's, that's the thing when, when I order speakers, like it needs to sound good out of the box. I'm not going to sit there and tune it every time I'm in a new room. So, uh, but I, I may buy my buddy. He is an audio engineer and he has like his own preset tuning rack where he can just come over and tune all my speakers to his secret sauce as he calls it and uh then all i have to do is just press a button depending on what speaker i'm deploying so well you know here here's one of the things i have an analogy to think about do you really need that kind of a speaker and if so is it like buying a drag uh drag car and taking it grocery shopping you know you have a car that could do you know a quarter mile in you know three seconds how you can mm -hmm. go grocery shopping with it you know and that's the thing you gotta look at What's what's feasible? What actually is good? Do you have big enough crowds to cover that? Now, a school function with you know five, six hundred, a thousand kids. Yeah, I could see something like that. But why not just get regular arrays and start flying arrays? It, it's, it's like anything else. There's different ways of doing things. There's not a right way or a wrong way of doing stuff. It's all boils down to different ways of doing things. So, I want to ask. Uh, going to the next question. You know, we talked a little about bags. We talked a little about gear. But one of the things I'm going to ask you guys, this one, this is for uh, dealing with other people at events. 
If you had a person you're working with at an event, be it a professional or non-professional, uh, someone comes up and does a request, says, I want my request song now, and they get mad and because and, and, you're saying, hey, you have to wait a little bit, and they go grab a hold of the person who's in charge of the event, be it you know bride and groom or be it a you know company uh, manager or be it whoever – to have you change a song right there and then, and they bring that person over to you, or a person doing, let's say, a photographer, videographer, manager of a facility, or a, a officiant, anything you think of, someone who is being difficult with you, what do you do to try to win them over to your side and try to make things uh, easy and palatable for the night and not have to worry about these bumps in the road and people being upset, even if they're saying stuff to you, maybe very mean, you know, you want them to, again, to work with them and you want them to be on your side. So how do you overcome that? How do you overcome that person and have you run into it? Uh, and, you know, someone being unprofessional, either, you know, a guest or being a, uh, a bride or groom, being a mother or a bride or a father or whomever it is, have you run into that? And how did you handle it? So I'm going to start off to, uh, this one with Taylor and Jordan and ask them, have you had, you know, that rude person, that one person to be the, another professional or be it uh, someone else or a crazy guy standing across the way from you at a wedding show yelling, hey, what's going on? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Um, well, what I like to do is I just try to kill him with kindness. And then once the event's over and I'm in my car, then I cry. Um, <laughs> well, we want you to cry. I cry. I don't want to cry. There's no crying, DJ. No crying right? baseball either. Right. But usually I just try to be as nice and understanding as possible. I try to, you know, listen to what they have to say. But um, I'm not super confrontational. So I don't usually, you know, get confrontational with another vendor or person. Um, when something that like that comes up, I just try to, you know, fix the problem or see what I can do. Okay. And what, what about your other half? Who, of the two of you guys, who is the person that you go, the other person goes to and says, help, I have a mean person. And to me, it's Tracy. She can handle it better than I can. We both can do it, but she has a little more, she can do it he much can better. He can handle it a lot better. <laughs> I don't know that lady who snapped in my face. He's had a lot of older ladies. That, that one almost got it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I can usually handle it. Um, I do IT, so <laughs> no one calls me when they're, it, you know, computers working, so I get yelled at a lot, <laughs> so I can handle it. I usually can handle people and just kind of get them calmed down or reverse it, but yeah, we, I had one who I didn't play what she wanted, and she, in my face, she almost, my assistant had to go talk to her <laughs> <laughs> before I did. Yeah, you don't, you don't want you don't want that. But uh, here, here's the other thing for being an IT person. Uh, now we got people asking you for IT questions to your business. So don't inundate him with questions on your computer. If your computer's not working right, go see a professional. Don't bug them. They have a DJ business. <laughs> <laughs> but IT people are very very important, especially understand network. If you and you have a question. Be friends with an IT person. That's that's always a big thing. Uh, Matt, how about you? How do you take care of that person who comes up to you and says, I want my song played now, or I want this, or hey, I want that, or you need to do this, or I want to see your manager. You know, Karen comes well, up to you and yells at you. Funny you should mention. I had an event last January, um, and this is why I don't really uh, do too many private events. No, that's not really why, but I just... I, weddings people seem to behave better at weddings at least at a mine because they're being seen by a bunch more people but i did a 50th or 60th or some sort of retirement but i don't remember it was last january and i have a sticker light on my laptop right so um this is why this is another reason why I, I think the sticker lights are a bad idea you don't ever you don't ever want someone to know who you are just by glancing um because if they're pissed off they could easily just google your name and just drop a bad review so um what happened, and that's exactly what happened, <laughs> she wanted to hear Cupid Ch or Cha Cha Slide, I think, and I just played it like three songs ago. So I said, oh, you know, I just played it three songs ago. I'm sorry, like, I'll, I'll play it again later. So she comes back 10 minutes later. I want to hear the song. 
it's like i you know i'm sorry like i'll get to it like i can't play the song that close together we just played it but you know if you have any other requests and then she comes back another 10 minutes later with my page pulled up on yelp and she's like this is you right and uh i'm like oh my god this lady and uh so i i caved i'm like oh got it coming up right now and uh basically catered to her for the rest of the night and uh it uh she it's worse because she was about 70 years old maybe 80 and uh just real grumpy karen uh she was the mother of whoever's birthday it was she wasn't even paying me uh and it was just very like very childish and uh so you i basically kill him with kindness so to say but um yeah that was a uh, that was not fun so i don't uh i don't really do too many things like that i just like People want to complain a lot sometimes, it seems like, these days, and money's tight, and everybody's tired of inflation. They think, oh, I should get the world because I'm paying all this money, but yeah. Better, though, I, I have that same printout that you see here. Um, so in the very bottom, well, this one just has must play, because this one didn't have any do not plays, but it says right there, must play. And then I have a separate one that says do not play, and it's in bright red. And so if somebody comes up and wants a line dance... And like, oh, my God, everyone would love it. Everyone would dance to it. I say, I'm sorry, bride and groom. Boom. And I hold it up right there. It said they said no line dances. And so I'm like, if you can bring them over and they could tell me right here that they're OK with it, cool, we'll play it. But uh, that's how I deal with it. It's like you got to take the I'm not being that dick of a DJ. You got to take that thought out and say, like, you know, it's not me. So. But yeah, people are cooler in California, though. We don't have too many Karens. Okay, so you don't want to be a jerk. Yeah, you don't want to be the bad DJ people look at and go, hey, you know, uh, you, uh, you're you being a, a bad, nasty person. I'm going to put a bad review. And that's that's one of the things you don't want is people, you know, trying to give you a review who uh, actually have nothing to do with the event you're doing. And that's that right there is bad. We see that every so often in news, a restaurant, you know, they had something happen at a restaurant and all of a sudden people were review bombing that restaurant which I feel it's uncalled for, uh, especially people who have not been to that restaurant and have not experienced a restaurant or business or store or whatever it is because they don't like X, Y, Z, fill in the blank. And that's not that's not nice. Uh, Adrian E said, I, I would be nice for so long. However, I would be firm but nice, just like the movie Roadhouse. And yeah, Patrick Swayze in the original Roadhouse, because I know they get a new one out on, um, on Amazon, on uh, Prime. Uh, Patrick Sweezy said that, you know, you walk them out, you're smiling. You're always, you know, you're being polite, you're being professional, you, you're, but you're still being firmed. And it's, it's one of the things that, uh, it's kind of a, a true thing. You're being firm and polite, but also you're, you know, saying, Hey, uh, you know, and one of the things that, uh, Tracy told me to do a long time ago, and I do this is when people come up complain about volume or anything is, Hey, let me work on it. Let me, let me get, let me, let me work on it. Um, and that's one of the things that, you know, I can then say, okay, Hey, let me work on it and I'll, I'll, I'll get that right to that for you. And that's what, you know, a lot of times, nine times out of 10, I'll say to someone is, you know, you know, I'll get, I'll get on it right, right away for you. Let me, uh, let me, let me, let me get it. Give me a few, give me a few minutes. Um, but sometimes people were like, you know, again, I have a woman on Saturday, on Saturday, Friday that wanted, uh, music change right there. And then, I mean, she wanted the music change right in front of her when she's standing there. I'm like, Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way, and it's going to be a, a few minutes because we're playing country music, and people want to hear the country music, and that's things like that happen. And you know, it's like I still kill, you know, did kind kindness to her, but it's like you know, it just makes you shake your head and go, "Wow, uh, Mr. Dixon, how do you as yourself deal with someone who is being unkind?" And Mr. Dixon, if you guys don't know, which most of you do know, he is a school teacher, so he deals with uh, students, which can be uh, challenging <laughs> as well. They have their own challenges. But when you deal with another adult acting like a uh, preschooler, we'll say that, <laughs> how do you handle that? Uh, it depends, because I had that happen to me like three times. The first time was when um, the original DJ had to bail out, and I guess he offers other services. And so when I um, showed up, they thought I was the help. They didn't know I was the DJ. And then leading up to that, wherever he discussed with the, fa the, the father who had paid for the, um, the event, it did not go well. So that the father was 
totally pissed off. So it's, it was one of those things where I was trying my best to win the father over. But anyway, you know how you, when you start off a reception, you usually try to hit the old people because the old people will probably leave, you know, after our hour in. But but this one, the old person was the one paying. So the younger crowd was getting kind of restless. They wanted a lot of that EDM kind of stuff. But I had to mix it up. But it's one of those things where since the father was paying and he gave me that look, he said, this better be on point. I had to go with the father. I just had, He just had to be pissed off at me. I had to be like that DJ where the little girl walks past the booth and sticks up her middle finger because he didn't play the, uh, the song that she wanted. So I just had to blow him off. And the other one was um, I had just finished doing a gig vlog gig vlog that I'll be uploading where um, the bride asked for a Pacific song. So I started playing it, but this particular guest came into the party late. So I guess there was a special song they wanted to play when he got there. So they was like, no, you got to play this song right now. Da, 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 da. I got flustered and I didn't know what to do. So I went, I gave in to the peer pressure and played the next song. And the bride turned around and freaked out. Good thing she was cool with it afterwards. And then after I played the song and the reception I got, that was a good call. So sometimes you got you got throw caution, but but there, there's times where it's a good call, and that was a good call. The third one was when this person was the um, guest the honor. And he wanted a certain style of music, but the guests wanted this style over here. So with him, he kept wanting to come up and request songs. So eventually I just said, well, this next song is requested by so-and-so. I just put it back on him. So I played the song and when the floor, you know, evaporated, everybody gave him the, the um, you know, the mean look as opposed to me. So that's how I handle it. And then the kids, I just blow them off since I'm the teacher at their at their school. When they just come with garbage, I just like, let's get out of here. <laughs> and you know, and that's that's the hard part is that sometimes, you know, adults do act like children. And, you know, you kind of have to you have to do it the right way, but you kind of call them up they're like, hey, this song is dedicated to so and so, to Bob. I'm gonna use Bob. If you if you know Bob, I'm not saying Bob's a bad person, but in this case, Bob's a bad person. And Bob or Dan or Tom or whoever it is, they're the bad person. But somebody's calling them out is a good thing. Um, Brentley, what about you? What do you run into? Especially you do with a lot of bars. You deal with uh, people, you know, putting things by your table, um, doing dumb things, doing crazy stuff. How do you handle the immature nature of uh, human beings uh, doing crazy stuff and acting uh uh, kind of entitled or saying, hey, you need to do this now because I want it. If I'm in a club, no. Nah. I'm doing. Uh, I'm following the club's format and I'm doing my thing. If your request fits, I'll think about it. And 90% of the time, if it's something I'm going to play or it's a banger, yeah, I'll throw it out. And if you do the phone thing, I actually pulled it up. I have something saved on my phone. So if you message me, you know, do your phone thing, I will reply back with this. If you are sending me your phone, I am sending this back to you. That will immediately get me out of a lot of the rich baby daddy. Uh, and if, what is it? Carnival right now? God. It, it, there's a new, there's a good EDM remix of it. I just downloaded. But... Carnival's a banger. You got to play the OG. I'm, over I'm, I'm already over it. I'm <laughs> so good. Over it. <laughs> Kanye, Kanye coming back. Oh God. It's about time. I, you had I thought we were done, here. but nope. whatever. <laughs> but when it comes to like a wedding, if it's now, luckily like our forms, for example, are so in depth. And by the time I've had my second, you know, conversation <clears throat> about music and everything with my couple, I can have my do not playlist and certain notes from them. And I will check in with them, you know, about that whole, all my notes going, anything I need to know about any of your guests, anybody you don't want making requests. By my chair. 
And I've actually gotten, there's one wedding I did where they gave me a picture of the guy who wasn't allowed to make requests. And they put it on my subwoofer for him to see. This man is not allowed to make requests. And I wound up DJing his wedding too. Go figure. But more often than not, if it's not my do not playlist, the first thing I'm going to do is be like, I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to. And when Miss Entitlement shows up, I'm going to go ask the couple. I will try to be like, hey, it's their day. Will your one song make their day any better? Especially put in the do not playlist because they didn't want to hear it on their day. A lot of people be like, you know, you're right. And I can only think about one person in the last five years who had to go ask the couple. And needless to say, my bride was so cool about it. And I could hear her say, F-bomb, no, from the dance floor. And this guest decided to walk out, grabbed her jacket, and left. And it you was also a couple of happy. It was, well, they were very clear. They they're like, you don't have to play clean versions after about the first half hour in. Just make sure our grandparents get their dance. After that, do what you do at an animal house. And we're going until bar time. Cool. And it was one of the most epic wedding re receptions I've had. But a lot of those guests, I don't, you know, or if I have somebody who comes from like the bride's family or friends, if it's not on my script, as I tell everybody, I am not touching it. It's not my place to call an audible here and start doing things that we haven't discussed. And I'm sorry if it upsets whoever it is, be it grandma, grandpa, you know, best friend from grammar school person, Whatever it is, you weren't included in this, you know, 13-page document I have. Well, and it's not huge necessarily, but every aspect of the day has its own page for it. So ceremony, it's got that. Entrance, social, each have their. So if it's not on there, I'm not taking a chance to someone one day. I'm not going to go and get a bad review because I didn't follow what my couple told me. And that's that's one of the things you know. Again, we want to we want to make sure, and I'm sure everyone here does um, wants to make sure the guest of the person who is throwing the event, be it a wedding, be it a corporate event, be it a birthday party, be it whatever, you want to make sure that the guest, the people come in there, friends, family of the you know uh, of the people in charge are the ones enjoying themselves, but. You can't make everyone happy. Sometimes you're going to play something that someone's like, oh, I don't like this song. And I've had before, I've had people say, change it. I've had women come up, men come up, go, can you change it? It's like, I'll change it in a bit. Can you play something that we can dance to? We've all heard this before. You look at the dance floor and there's people out there dancing and having fun. Now, I'm not talking about like one or two people. I'm talking like 20, 30 people out there. You have 140 people. You have people sitting down, relaxing, you know, toe tapping. You see them bounce along, but you see the dance floor is pretty well packed. People having fun, and then this person wants to play whatever. Sometimes you gotta say, "Hey, you know what? No," or "Hey, you know what? Let me see if I can play it later," and you know, get in later. But it, it's it's the uh, I want to play it now. We want to make sure that we don't make them mad, but we also want to make sure that you know they understand that hey, I will do my best, and that's that's one of the things like. Uh, uh, like Taylor said earlier, she said that uh, you kill my kindness, and that's very true. You kill my kindness, it goes pretty far. But also, like Adrian said, you're nice for so long, and then you start being firm, and then you know, kind of like you're like the cooler, you walk in someone, you can't physically walk them out of the of the event, but um, you can kind of like walk them away a little bit of the of of you, and say, hey, okay, that's uh, thank you very much, I appreciate. I appreciate your feedback. Have a nice night. And, you know, it's, it's, you have to do your job and do it right. Um, so here's one more follow up for you guys also for this one. And we'll go around real quickly. Let's say you were at a gig at an event and it's a event in a building that has multiple events going on. So you have other weddings, birthdays, bar mitzvahs, quinceaneras, whatever, going in other rooms and you see someone out there in the hallway um having 
uh, adult beverages that uh, is also the DJ in the other room. And, you know, they're pretty, I uh, would this way, very, very intoxicated in the hallway, drinking still. Uh, what do you do in that situation? You know, it, it, it's, it's, I know it's not my place. It's not my gig. It's not my facility, but you know, maybe management should know, maybe you should say nothing. So DJ Brentley, I'm going to start with you. You go into a multi uh, venue gig and you see a, you see Matt over there. He is drunk drinking uh, Everclear, you know, right from the bottle, just, you know, bottle up, just dumping it down his throat. Um, what what do you do? You, you you say, hey, what's up? And you keep walking? Or do you go to a manager like, hey, uh, you might want to check the DJ over in the, uh, the sunroom or the East Room, whatever it's called. Because I'm kind of a prick when it comes to that. And I hold myself, especially in the wedding venues I'm at, I hold myself to a certain standard. And when we're dealing with someone's day across the board, I don't care how much they're paying you or what part of the venue you're in. If you are getting paid to be a professional, you need to be just that and live up to what you're getting paid for. I live up to what you are getting paid for. Plain and simple. Uh, I, and at that, I will either A, where I've had, you know, even though I'm not friends with the couple, you know, don't work for these companies. We're kind of friends, but whatever. If I see their employees getting hammered, Oh, I'm giving their boss a call. Yo, your DJ is getting out of control over here, or your DJ is drunk. You may want to take care of this problem and come down to X, Y, and Z venue. Or if it's, you know, a single off, be like, dude, we're friends. This is not a good look for you. But you don't need to be that DJ who's going to get a bad review and possibly lose money if you're hammered. Now, hand in hand with that, most people that book me know there's the other side to what I do. I'm a club DJ. I encourage stupidity. I want to see, you know, it's almost senior pub crawl weekend where tops will come off. My stickers will be on girls and I will be encouraging people to do shots and do get again on the barn dance. And I, it, amazingly, it's one of the biggest booking weekends I see outside of engagement season are the weeks after this weekend and the graduation. Cause I'm encouraging their bad behaviors. Now they're going to get married. So I kind of want that whole stigma with me to a certain point, not having the 18 ambulances in a calendar year show up. No, it's an entirely different story because I, I learned my lesson on how hard to push. Or but, be a cold blue cam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lacrosse, Wisconsin, you got to love it. But I'm definitely not trying to have see anybody's day get screwed up. And no. if it came to it, like if I was somewhere at like celebrations when a DJ actually did fall out one night, had and I don't know what happened, but it just so happened one of my trainees was over there with one of my seasoned DJs, and we just sent her over there with Spotify to help out to save the day for a little bit. So that's the other, you know, part and parcel with it. If something like that comes up, we're sober. We can do that if needed. And I'm sure if nothing else, they would have invited both receptions to dance together until they figured it out, which probably could have worked as well. So you have, you know, that and a place like that. But I've also seen it where, you know, the officiant was doing shots before they go down the altar with the groomsmen and was slurring his words the entire ceremony. I mean, there's, but this is again, lacrosse, Wisconsin, cold blue cam, wild west of Wisconsin. What applies here does not fly anywhere else in the state or the civilized nation for that matter. Well, no, I also believe this is one of the things I also believe. And you guys out there in, you know, out there and other DJs, and I'll ask the guys here, I believe that professional officiants, people who like us, professional DJs, and people who take really care about the craft are not going to drink. It's usually the people who are drinking. And again, I've seen officiants drinking with groomsmen and with the groom and, you know, doing whatever they do. Uh, they're usually friends or family. They're not professionals. Their uncle, their brother, sister, best friend. And sometimes, you know, 
they're very professional because they don't want to mess up. And they know it's a very important day for their friend, their brother, their nephew, niece, whatever it is. And they don't do stuff. 90% of the, 99% of the time, I would say that's the way they are. But you do get those knuckleheads that, you know, they want to drink a fifth of Jack Daniels before they uh, start walking down the aisle as the officiant or a fifth Jack before they start DJing. Get rid of the nerves. Works every time. <laughs> what about you, Matt? What, if you saw a uh, a DJ at a venue, you saw, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reverse it to Brentley. You're there in lacrosse and you saw Brentley drinking Everclear, uh, <laughs> drink, bottle up, guzzling it down like it was uh, water. <laughs> or I Jaeger. have standards. If you get a bottle of scotch or a bottle of Maker's Mark. <laughs> We have standards here. Standards. Uh -huh. No, no, we're we're going um, hardcore. We're going Jaeger. We're doing Jaeger bombs. We're doing. <laughs> I mean, like it's not my place. I, first of all, I'm not a rat, but uh, it's not my place to tattle on somebody. Uh, it's not my place to. Now, if somebody's creating a present, like a clear and present danger to either themselves or others, that's something different. But if somebody's drunk and making a fool of themselves, that's not my responsibility to to tell them to stop. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever had to have that experience, but um, I I mean, when I DJed in a, I used to DJ in some bars back in college and five years when I graduated past college, I was still doing that. And uh, there were times where I'd have to call security because like people were just too drunk and they were either not, they weren't like annoying towards me, but they were just like falling off tables and uh, you know, look running into my facade or things like that. Um, but at weddings, I mean, it's, you know, I, I, it's, it's not me to, it's not my job to play babysitter. So um, if you want to get drunk and look like a fool, then so be it. I don't know. Okay. It's just me. Yeah, I don't, if it's a DJ friend of mine, I, I, I don't know. I've never been in that situation. Um, maybe I, I secretly like people self-sabotaging themselves. <laughs> like, to see, like to see the show play out for how it is. Uh, oh, you, I don't you know. Want, I you want to see the trash show, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had a girl. I had a girl this weekend that wanted to hear that new Beyonce song, and uh, I played it like a couple songs after she requested it, and uh, she was like off to the side. She was pretty drunk, but she was off to the side, and she goes to like run out to the dance floor when she hears the song come on, and she just eats it like right in the middle of the dance floor, <laughs> and then she popped right back up. Uh, but it was just, you know, it's. I've, well, dr I can't. drunk patriots, uh, drunk patriots at a event. That's kind of uh, we all know we all run into that. We deal with that. Doesn't matter it's a bar, wedding, whatever you're doing, karaoke. I know we have karaoke DJs out there watching you. Karaoke DJs, you know how many people go all, up uh, and karaoke drunk. But we're talking about other professionals. Yeah, other. DJs. I would say, like sometimes I'll say, "Are you good?" Like if I see somebody that's like if the bartender's a little wilder or somebody's getting a little out of hand i'll say oh you good man you good and that's like the extent of what i'll because again we're all adults we shouldn't have to tell each other what to do or babysit each other so if somebody wants to be an adult and make their own decision and I, get drunk I, and risk their I business think, i think if you have a good bartender they're going to see people coming up and they're yeah. going to like they ask for like a rum and coke it's going to be all coke no rum <laughs> you know it's going to be you know, all Diet Coke or regular Coke, whatever it is, and no rum. And that way, kind of hopefully, by the time the end of the night happens, they're still um, toasty, but they're not uh, passing out, uh, falling out on the dance floor. We don't want, we don't want that unless you're at Ammo House in Lacrosse when DJ Brentley is DJing there. And talk even about the DJing. Zoo, even at the zoo, there's a trash can. As you're going out, you can stop, puke by the door, and then walk out. And it's like that at every bar in downtown Lacrosse because it's a college party town. Knowing you guys are from uh, Crown Point, it's kind of like going to West Lafayette and Purdue. In that same kind of, you have, you know, there's a couple of bars in Purdue that you have a row of garbage cans because you're walking out and there's people just standing by them puking <laughs> before they get out the door. Oh, yeah. I mean, Absolutely. not that I've they're ever... in front of three cops. They don't even. <laughs> exactly. Now, I I've never been a part of that ever. <laughs> Not in the nineties ever, but no, no. Yeah. Brentley, Brentley's an angel. Brentley's got a halo above I'm, his head. I'm old. I'm <laughs> really. I, I'm fifty one. I'm going to be fifty one in May. And I'm still DJing in college clubs. There is something inherently wrong with this. Well, because you look like you're twenty years old. <laughs> I was going to say you don't look no fifty one. 
He, he's, he's he looks like he's 20 years old. He, he, here's one of the things about Brentley. Brentley, and this is a blessing for you, because you're part Asian, you have that gene in yeah. you that makes you look really young. I'm sorry. Then, I've, been, I've got about seven, eight years before all of a sudden, just like my my aunt um, or my dad, my uncles, like my dad was getting close to death. It's 56. He had just turned the corner where it was all starting to go gray. And once I hit 60, that's it. I'm going to look like Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> There's going to be no stopping it. I will have the little but roundy. You, and, no, it's coming. But do you take so, do you take your you take your troller and do wax on, wax off, waxing, doing the music, oh, the, wax on, wax and, off? You know. At um, that point, it's going to be click. You know, push a button, auto transition for us. I, I'm kidding. I would never have a robot grab hold of you, carry you around. You just you just sit on a robot. The robot's walking around. <laughs> I mean, hopefully by then my daughter will take over and just be like, "Okay, Dad, I'll take this gig from you." Cool. Well, if you're going to be 51 this year and 60, that's eight years, and she's what 10? Uh, she's 11. So yeah, okay, she'll be so 11. Though. So she'll be 19 years old, going on 20. She can't DJ a bar because it's in over this 21. Town, in Wisconsin, you can. The legal age to work in a bar in the state of Wisconsin is 18. You can bartend, you can serve, whatever Ooh. it is. I, I was floored by that when I moved here. I'm like, what? We can hire 18-year-olds? Wait, they can serve booze, but they can't drink it? How could they tell somebody what they like to drink? Well, don't forget in Wisconsin, they had the drinking age. Uh, well, it was 18 till what, the mid-90s? Yeah, and you can still. Uh, if I go to the bar with my daughter, who's 11 years old. Give my daughter a seven and seven. Cool. They're going to do it. They're not even going to question it. They're just going to do it. It's wow. legal. Because you can, it, it, if you're with your parents up until 20 or up until 18, they can buy you booze. There's just that little gap when you're an adult that's under 21 that you can't buy booze in a bar. It's what's going up here. Code Blue it's Cam, unreal. check it out if you haven't done so already. Uh, look at lacrosse. They always got great stuff. And speaking of great stuff, let's go over to Ohio to uh, Mr. Dixon. And Mr. Dixon, what about you uh, with uh, people who, uh, another DJ you saw that was drunk in the hallway drinking their uh, Jack Daniels and uh, whatever our drinks are doing, hang hanging next to a garbage can, uh, looking like they're going to uh, yak because they're so drunk. What do you do when you see something like that? Just as long as he's not messing with me, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. I'm my, my own business. Go do what I have to do. Then go back and do my job and just pray that he gets through whatever he needs to get through and it won't mess it up. But yeah, that's not that's not my problem. Be like, that's as long as he don't venture into my where I'm at messing up. So each to your own and you know, deuces, I'm out of here. <laughs> go enjoy your uh alcohol over there. Okay. So uh Taylor and Jordan, I'm gonna finish up with you two guys. Uh what happens if you walk to do a uh, event, uh, be it a uh, wedding show or be it a uh, a venue or a, a anything, and you saw another DJ sitting there, drunker than a skunk, um, you know, drinking, and you know you could see they're very impaired. Uh, what do you do? I have to mind my business and look the other way. <laughs> I mean, I'm probably not going to do anything. I'm, I'm probably going to watch. And kind of laugh about it with Kid. him. Um, popcorn. Watch. But yeah, I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> I'd probably mind my business. If it's a someone working for someone I know, I might let them know. But uh, other than that, yeah, I'm probably just going to sit back and watch. Let him make a fool of himself. I like that. Oh, I, see, I'm, I'm more line set. I would... Uh... Um, basically say something to management, like, hey, you may want to check the DJ in the other room. Um, and the reason why is that because, especially nowadays, us DJs, we like things like uh, certain DJs in here, like CO2 cannons or sparklers or whatever that we're doing. And all someone, the above. Yeah. Someone who is impaired uh, may hit something at the wrong time, judgments off. And someone could get hurt. And that's the thing I look at is we we, we want to kind of, it's, I'm not trying to be the police, but we kind of have to like look out, not just for our guests, but the guests in general, because something happens. 
all of a sudden, you know, law enforcement and fires coming in there and the, your guests are, you know, they're leaving to go see what's going on, the the, the show going on next door. Or, and we, I, I just don't want to see someone getting hurt. That's to me is the big thing. But, you know, again, it, it, you, everybody has to do different things. And you guys out there, put it down in the comment. I want to hear what you guys think about that. What would you do if you saw another uh, DJ drinking? And uh, would you say something or would you just... Let them, you know, let them be what they be. Um, and I, again, I want to thank you guys all for tonight. I appreciate all, all of you guys being here tonight and having fun. And my, uh, hold on a second here. My dog is, my dog keeps wanting me to pet her and she keeps running away. <laughs> you want to come say hi? Want to come say hi? No, she just wants to come say hi. But, uh, my customer service manager here. Uh, it keeps coming for pets. So <laughs> with that said, I want to thank you guys all for tonight coming in here tonight and having fun. And I'm actually going to do uh, Brentley tonight. You want to take us out for the show? With that, hope everybody has a great week and a great weekend. And if you're gigging, I hope the dance floors are full. Peace out, everyone. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you.